What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Creating Wealth Podcast, where I, Kyle, from Kyle Curtin Real Estate, interview local top dogs in the real estate investing, wealth building, and personal finance industries. Let's build together. What's up, guys? This episode of the podcast was extremely informative with an absolutely amazing guest. We had a super great chat about a variety of different topics that are crucial to making a positive impact in your business, from the power of networking to the necessity of failure and learning from it to achieving happiness and personal growth. There is tons of value in this episode, and I hope you enjoy. Let's jump right into the episode. What's going on, guys? Welcome to episode 19 of the Creating Wealth podcast. Today, I get the great pleasure of getting to know Jose Bredo Jr. He is your neighborhood-friendly insurance agent over at LaPointe Insurance in Fall River, and I'm very excited to have him on. What's going on, Jose? How are you, man? How's everything? Hey, Kyle, man. You know, first and foremost, that was a good introduction, my brother. Ah, goodness. Uh, <laughs> now, nah, man, everything is good. You know, can't, can't complain. Um, you know, like I said, I'm alive and doing the best I can to, you know, keep myself above water, man. So uh, at the end of the day, that's really all that matters. We got to we gotta, we gotta keep riding, man. But thank you so much for having me on here. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully I won't be too boring. <laughs> I don't think so. I'm very excited to have you on. And uh, you're, you're definitely right thank about you. You know, staying above water and just keep grinding and stuff, man. That's the name of the game. Uh, so to kind of jump into things, you know, if you could kind of tell me a little bit about like your backstory and, you know, what you do and like kind of what got you into the insurance industry. Um, yeah. Floor is yours. Right. So, so um, you know, I was um, I was born in Puerto Rico to to a wonderful, uh, magnificent uh, parents. My parents are from the Dominican Republic. Um, then I came to this country when I was like eight years old, somewhere around there. I was raised in Providence, Rhode Island. That's where I went to high school. Uh, went back to Puerto Rico to live for a little bit, then lived in Florida. And, and four years ago, I came back up north. Um, as far as the insurance is concerned, man, this is a great, great story. So um, my the first job I ever had, uh, I was uh, I was 14 years old. I used to go to a charter school down in, uh, on Broadway Street. Uh, on in Providence, and they had like a school to work program. And the first job I ever had was with an insurance company. Uh, I was a uh, Providence Washington insurance company. So imagine me, a 14 year old kid, um, and a job in insurance. Now, granted, it wasn't selling policies or anything like that, but I was like more with underwriting and kind of, you know, I see that side of the business. But I always say that if I knew then what I knew now, I would have never left the insurance industry, never. Uh, and then a few years ago, uh, back in towards the end of 2012, I was in uh, I was in the car business, and then, you know, I would did some retail after that, and my friend just kind of came by one day. I was working at a, at a retail store. He came by one day. He was like, "Hey, man, you should really give, you know, this company a try, man. They're, they're hiring right now. The pay is good. It's a good experience." And um, I applied for the position. It was in the call center down in, in Orlando, or Lake Mary, Florida, and then um, it was a Liberty Mutual. Just I don't know why I keep like trying to go around the subject, <laughs> but I was <laughs> I was like like it's classified information. No, it's not. Uh, so it was uh, I was I was there uh, from you know for like four years maybe, and then well, I came up here in 2016, um, and then now I'm kind of doing the independent agent thing. So uh, in all, I've been in the insurance industry for about nine years. And uh, like I said, like I said earlier, if I knew then when I was 14, what I know now, I don't think that I would have ever done anything else, man, other than insurance. <laughs> that's really crazy, man. Especially, you know, getting into that kind of industry, like that young, you know, that's, yeah, that's really absolutely. nice. Was yeah, absolutely. There... But, but that's, that was the cool thing about that school, man. It was, it was amazing. It was a great school. Of course. You know, you definitely can't go wrong, you know, especially kind of getting the taste of like a different kind of industry that you've never really looked into before um you know like that young that's that's awesome you know when your buddy kind of came to you and told you about you know, uh like this company and you know like what they do and stuff like that was there anything that kind of like really hooked your eye about it or you know was it just kind of like something new that you wanted to try out yeah or? that's i think that was that was pretty much it uh, yeah. obviously you know the, the brand liberty mutual is a huge brand so obviously you know you kind of figured you know this has to be a pretty decent job um, you know, so that, that definitely had a, uh, 
you know, uh, an impact on my decision. And I was also in a, in a, in a transition period where I really wanted to do something else uh, other than retail. Um, and, um, you know, so it just kind of came at the perfect time. It really, really came at the perfect time. Um, and like I said, the rest is history. Of course, man. Everything happens for a reason. It was meant to be. You got that right. You got that <laughs> right. Uh, absolutely. That's great, man. That's that's really cool. Uh, to yes. transition kind of a little bit, you know, into the next question. Um, what is kind of like your drive and your vision for the long term? So my vision for the long term is to really take my, you know, where I work at now, you know, uh, La point and really just kind of take it to the next level. Um, you know, that's kind of, you know, I've been able to more than anything, I, I think we've been able to collaborate and add a lot of value to each other, to each other. Uh, the, the agency has definitely in the short time that I've been there has added a lot of value, uh, you know, to me. And I think that I definitely have uh, and will continue to add value uh, to the agency, whether it's because of, you know, I'm always uh, not that I'm, you know, a social media person or anything like that. But uh, I mean, I've gone over the kind of like the, the fear of it and being in front of a camera and just kind of talking on the fly kind of thing. Um, and at the same time, you know, they, they, they have the resources to kind of really do a lot of things, which is just a forward thinking mentality that they have is just absolutely awesome. So my drive is to really take uh, the agency and really myself, uh, you know, to, to, to the next level and really, and even kind of digging a little bit deeper into that. Um, my biggest, my biggest goal is to make the insurance industry, especially within the real estate sphere, like huge. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of times as agents, we kind of tend to, uh, to look at ourselves as just, uh, you know, like, I don't know, like uh, the third wheel type of thing, right. <laughs> of the process. Not, and we, and to be honest, there's no, there's no, you know, uh, there's no real estate without insurance. That's just the way it is. This is hands yep. down. Um, so, you know, so, so we're not just some, you know, something that comes, you know, we're, we're not like the, the extra, we're not, we're not the chaperone of the process. No, we're, we're actually in, in the, we're, we're in this together. So, you know, I, my, my mentality is to really, uh, my goal is to really change the mentality of a lot of us in the insurance industry to really see us as, as just a vital part of the process. And therefore we should, you know, we should, we should act like it. You know what I mean? We should, uh, we should definitely uh, have a little, you know, swag that a lot of these, you know, realtors and loan officers walk around with, <laughs> but, uh, but th th that's us too, man. Like we are a crucial part to the process. So that's really where my mentality is over the next couple of years to try to figure out a way to make myself as an insurance agent and really all of us in insurance, you know, really, really vital. Uh, people know that we are crucial to the process. You're totally right, man. I, I totally agree. Um, you know, that you guys are like a hundred percent essential to especially real estate, you know, like not, nothing really happens, you know, that's big without insurance, you know, like if you're buying a car, you know, you're not going to buy it once, like without insurance, you know, if something happens to it and that's it. You know, that's why you have insurance and, you know, it covers everything. Same with the house, you know, like all kinds of different insurances. Like it's, you guys are completely essential, you know, and I feel like, you know, um, what's it called? Uh, yeah, it's, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's a, it's all good, bro. <laughs> what, I'm, I get, well, what, what, what I'm trying to get to is, and again, this is not a slight. I'm just, you know, we just talked, you know, talking off the cuff here, but. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the biggest thing is, you know, for me is, like I said, I, I, as an insurance agent, it's, and again, I am very, very proud and I am very, very, more than anything, appreciative of everyone that has ever sent me a referral, whether it was a realtor, a loan officer, a real estate attorney, even clients. I am so, so thankful for them. Uh, but it's, but, you know, but it's one thing to be grateful and thankful for the hard work, you know, for, for having, you know, for putting in the hard work and everything like that. And it's a whole other thing to just be like, feel lucky that you're even in, in, in the process. Of so and sometimes like, that's, you know, that's not, that's not the way it is. Like, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you, you know, people chose, like you're a realtor, right? So, you know, so you chose to do that. Man, hey, kudos for you, man. That's awesome. I love real estate. I love realtors. You know, <laughs> some people choose to do loans. Hey, great. Good for you. You know, I'm not that smart. 
to be a loan officer, nor am I patient enough to be <laughs> like a realtor. Someone house is like, I'm just, so you know what? I, I, you know, I'm in my shell, but I know that I'm, I know that I'm crucial and essential to the process. So, you know, just changing that mentality where we're just happy to be here versus now we are happy to be here, but we should be here. You know, like we, we, we just, you know, we, we are needed here. That, that in itself is one of those things that I'm really trying to, you know, uh, strive for. But again, a lot of the, a lot of that comes with content. A lot of that comes with conversations. And that's why I mentioned my, you know, the point, because a lot of what their, what a lot of their vision is, you know, is just trying to do the best we can to kind of put us more out there. You know, that's, that's, that's really what we're, what we're shooting for. Yeah, of course, man. And, you know, to kind of stem back to, you know, a point that you made earlier about, um, you know, like getting out there and stuff like that and, you know, getting over, I guess, maybe like a resistance, I guess you could say, or yep. like, you know, to get on camera and like be on social media and stuff. It's definitely a really big jump, but like putting yourself out there like that is like so insane. The doors that open, man. Like, I mean, that's the reason that you and I met, you know, through, it was through a meetup. We got in the same room, you know, we hit it off and like, you know, now we're talking on a podcast, you know what I mean? Like we're having fun. Like, a uh, closed mouth doesn't get fed, brother. Yeah, of course. <laughs> never, <laughs> that's one thing. And again, I'm not a. I was. I was. I've never really been like too big on social media because, you know, different things. You know, just didn't have the time for it or whatever. But over the last couple of years, I have seen the need to really be a presence. You know, within the social media realm, because everybody's in social media, pretty much. A lot of people are on social media, so. If you're not taking your business, especially in my case, or even though I've been in, in, in the industry for a long time, I'm fairly new up here in Massachusetts and New England. So, you know, uh, unless, and, and even those who have been in the industry for a very long time, I still feel that social media can, should play a, a, a big role in your business plan. But, but especially for someone like me, social media is, is it's a great resource, man. So, yeah, I, I'm all for it. Yeah, definitely, man. I mean, like just the the people that you meet on so, social media are it can be like just absolutely ridiculous. You yeah. know, like there's a a good amount of people, you know, that I'll like just message and like, you know, see how they're doing and stuff like that and like we're friends and everything. But like I've never seen these people before. You know what I mean? Like we'll text all the time and everything, see what each other are doing, you know, how the projects are going, this that, the other. I've never seen the guy before. You know what I mean? Like and it's like the power of social media and you know, like one thing I kind of really want to hit on too, um, is like when you kind of put yourself out there, like regardless of what industry you're in, like overall, you know, as a principal, like you never know, like who's going to see that you're doing that and like, just like get attracted to you. You know what I mean? Like one of your neighbors could be looking for, you know, uh, like a certain type of insurance or whatever. And like, if you put up like a Facebook post or something saying like, Oh, you know, I'm over at um, you know, LaPointe, I do like this, that, the other, then he'll be like, Oh, no way. You know, I didn't know that. Like, we've never had that conversation before. And then there you go, you know, like, you know, and the, and the thing is, which is really rewarding and, and it takes a while, you know, to kind of get the ball rolling at that. But, yeah. you know, one of the, one of the nicest things that, and again, I'm completely humbled by it, you know, is that sometimes like when I would be like at a networking event and somebody would come up to me like, Hey man, I see you on Facebook and, you know, when are, when are we going to be able to grab lunch or grab a cup of coffee and whatever. So now rather than just being someone that's con like, rather than me being someone that's continuously trying to uh, take that first step to meet people, there have been quite a few people that have actually kind of taken that first step and be like, want to, you know, want to get together. I mean, again, I'm nothing special. I'm just a regular dude, man. But again, it's true. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm nothing, you know, again, I'm just a regular guy. But the fact is that just a lot of us, you know, regular folks that are trying to make great living doing what we do, and the more we can interact with each other, you know, whatever the case may be, then the better, you know, we're, we're better for it. So, and, and that's been the value that social media has really, um, you know, kind of presented to me is that I've been able to connect with people, like you said, that under other circumstances, I probably wouldn't have been able to, to meet had it not been because they came up on a suggested friends uh, list on Facebook or on Instagram, like, or oh, you shouldn't, you, you probably know this person. You know what I mean? Other than that, I probably wouldn't have been able to meet this person. And then that just creates an opportunity. So why not, you know, why not take it? It does, man. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. You know, just the leverage 
is is incredible you know and like just seeing all the people out there and everything and I feel like like social media overall, like depending on, I guess, how the tool is used, um, you know, it could be kind of like an exposure. Um, you know, like if you like depending on like stuff you posted, you know, whether it was like, you know, a lot of analytical kind of stuff or, you know, it was like funny kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like just to be able to kind of like show off like your personality, um, yeah. you know, and I feel like that could be a really cool tool for that you know, as well as like building a brand at the same time and like, you know, just kind of showing like who you are as a person and everything. And like, I feel like it's really cool, you know, in that kind of regard. And the great thing is, bro, that if you know what you're doing, if you know what you're doing, like, or if you, even you just have a relatively small amount of knowledge on how social media works and things like that, it's free, man. It is. It's free. That's the best part. Don't get me wrong. There's certain, there's certainly a value in, you know, uh, boosting posts and, 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 and spending a little bit of money. To, there's, there's absolutely a ton of value in that. But if you just know what you're doing, you, you can really have an impact on social media simply by just being present and doing your thing. And then if you, you know, that's going, only going to be exacerbated by if you, if you got some money to spend and you know what you're doing, then, hey, great, even better, because then now your outreach is going to be even even bigger. But at the end of the day, man, it's free. It's literally free marketing that you get on social media. So, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't understand why, you know, uh, why would we, you know, people are hesitant to get into it. And I mean, that's fine. It's not for everybody. I completely understand. But what I'm trying to say is that it's really free marketing, man. And and um, it's a great way to meet people. It's a great, a lot of the partnerships and really friendships that I have right now is because of social media. You know, uh, it's like, it's really, really, it's really, really a great tool uh, for anyone that's trying to grow their business. It is, man. I, I totally agree. It's, you know, overall, it's it's just a really crazy tool. Uh, that actually transitions really well, um, you know, into the next question. What are your thoughts on building relationships and expanding your network? Oh, I know man. you kind of got into it a good amount, you I know, mean, a couple minutes ago, but. <laughs> Dude, we're, we're, I mean, I don't know of anyone that's really anything without a network. I mean, it's just, you can't do anything without having some, some sort of network. So um, that's, that, that, that's, that to me, networking is just, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's crucial uh, for anyone that's trying to grow their business or really just keep, keep their business alive or just kind of continue to grow their business. Um, net, networking and, 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 and expanding um, you know, establishing new relationships and, and of course, you know, nurturing existing relationships. That's, I mean, that's just business. That's just good practice. That's just a really good thing to do. Um, so, I mean, I, again, I, I, that's one area that I'm really trying to, uh, again, continuously uh, emphasize within any, anything that I do is how can I network more? How can I be a better resource for my existing relationships? How can I, you know, establish new relationships and things of that nature? That's, that's really what, that's really what it's all about. It really, really is, man. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now I thought, I think about this a little bit differently, um, I guess, than the popular opinion. I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts on it. So obviously, you know, with everything that has shut down in the past almost year at this point, um, obviously, you know, it's been harder and harder for people to meet like in person and stuff and, you yeah. know, at restaurants or, you know, whatever, but then, you know, people started to adapt and, you know, do meetups on zoom and stuff. What are kind of your thoughts on that? Cause I think personally that, I mean, yeah, I mean, I value the, the face to face relationship, you know, overall much more than like just screen to screen or whatever. Um, but I mean, I feel like you can leverage going to like a couple more meetups a day you know in like different locations because you're in your living room the whole time you know you could hit like like four different groups if you wanted to you know that could normally be in like i don't know like hudson new hampshire or cambridge or you know yeah. you can't hit all those places in a day you know what i mean Absolutely. Like people get jobs and so i feel like there's a little bit more leverage you know with everything being a lot more online you know i'd love to yeah, kind of so, hear your thoughts <laughs> so to be honest you know for me the biggest challenge was precisely that because I am a very social person. You know, I consider myself a social butterfly, uh, you know, a rather heavy set one, but, but nonetheless, a, a butterfly. But, um, 
but again, this has a lot of value because like you said, you know, you're, I'm in, I thought you're like in the low area, right? If I'm mistaken, yep. somewhere in the rain. And um, here we are having a great conversation, you know, laughing, you know, just, just two guys, you know, talking and, you know, we don't have to leave our, our houses. We don't have to leave our homes and we can have a great conversation. Now, of course, like you said, I definitely value the face-to-face -face interaction more, but at the end of the day, these are the circumstances that I have. And to be completely honest, moving forward, this is going to be the new norm. Yeah. Like, I don't know that we'll ever be able to go back to the way things were at any point in the future. And that's okay. That is totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's, there's you know, no, like, we're fine. That this is going to be okay. So I, mean, I have a very simple, you know, I guess mantra that I learned a long time ago is if you, if you have a problem and you can't fix it, then don't worry about it. And if you have a problem and you can fix it, then don't worry about it. Just fix it. So either way, it's just a matter of, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta be in the right mindset. You gotta have, you know, again, this has been tough. And I, I, again, I'm not, I'm not, you know, diminishing that fact, but this is the circumstances that we have and we got to make the best of what we have and just move forward. Yeah, I definitely, I really like that mantra that you just said. I, I like the way, you know, that's phrased and stuff. <laughs> Well, it's, it's not original. I thought it was somebody, but yeah, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, we definitely do, you know, kind of have to work with what we have. But like, I feel like what's interesting now is, you know, kind of how everybody's adapted, like making things virtual and stuff, even for, you know, if and when things, you know, go back to normal, you know, whatever the, the normal is, like a tomorrow, a year from now, 10 years from now. Um, but like, I feel like, you know, there could be a lot of adapting, you know, across all kinds of different business models. Now that people know that, you know, your employees may or may not like actually have to come into the office, mm -hmm. you know, and be able to work off their computer and like, you know, hop on Zoom with like their managers or coworkers or whatever, and still be able to get things done um, just without actually being required to come into the office. You know, so I'm really curious to see kind of from like a business perspective, you know, in the next like five to 10 years, you know, kind of knowing that like you can adapt this way and like make things virtual and, um, you know, kind of do a lot of your operation, you know, from home or, you know, be able to hire, you know, people from like across the country if you wanted to. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I just. I think, I think that the, the challenge, the challenge, at least for someone like me. You know, the, the challenge is that, like, I really do like going out of the house. I think that, you know, man, and again, I love my house, you know, but I don't want to be here 24 hours a day. Yep. You know, so that's where it gets a little bit challenging to kind of, you know, and again, you know, employers will do whatever they can to, you know, maximize their profit. That's it. That's fine. That's it. That's what business is all about. But, you know, I think it, it really becomes an issue where almost like mental health, like, bro, nobody wants to be in the same place 24 hours a day. Nobody. Like, that's just ridiculous. Yeah. So at some point, then on top of that, you have the circumstances, for example, like someone like me, like I have three children, right? Like right now, I hate wearing AirPods. I do. <laughs> but the reason I have to is because they're, <laughs> it's, a, it's a kind of asylum in here, man. Like, the, you know, the prisoners of, uh, you know, the, who opened the gates? I like, Everybody's going crazy. So if I didn't have these, you would be hearing, you know, it would be very difficult for us to be having this conversation like regular folks do. Uh, so, you know, you like being able to leave the house to be completely honest, like one of those things was like, we, we sometimes we need that. But that being said, you know, again, this is going to be the new norm and it's up, it's really going to be up to all of us to kind of adapt to it. And, you know, within our homes, find a way, find a way to uh, make things happen so that we do have the right circumstances and the right environment to uh, to get work done because it is definitely possible. It is definitely possible. And like you said, employers are seeing that. You know, I think that's one of those things that it's inevitable. You know, you gotta, you know, you're home and you're gonna work and that's fine. But it, it had, uh, there has to be some type of, uh, I guess, balance between, you know, I, I don't know that we will, I don't know that it would be beneficial for any employer to go completely, or at least most employers, not all, but most. Yeah to go completely remote because you're just going to, this is going to be a lot of burnout. And it's not even because the job got harder. It's because the circumstances around the job are different where you're stuck at home all day, every day. Nobody wants that. Man. I got that guarantee. You, man. And I love my house. I love my kids. I love my wife. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm good, bro. 
honestly, man, I think that's a really good point. You know, I feel like that hasn't really, um, you know, been introduced to too much, you know, kind of with everything going on. And, um, you know, I imagine, you know, like trying to work from home, you know, with a couple kids or, you know, the wife or whatever, I can imagine, you know, that might have its challenges sometimes, you know, especially if like both people are working from home. And, um, you know, you're right. I think like actual like face to face interaction is a completely yeah healthy part of the human experience. Yeah. Um, you know, and to some degree, I feel like you still kind of need that, you know, to be able to like just talk to people online is is great and everything but like i feel like it doesn't actually like hit the same way you know it doesn't it it definitely doesn't but again kyle and this is what i this is really there is nothing i can do to change that right now of course you you know what i mean so at the end of the day this is a great like and this is what i like about like things like zoom and what we're doing right now see you and i have this conversation and I'm like, yo, Kyle's a good, Kyle's a great guy, obviously a great professional. Uh, and you may be like, yo, Jose has a, you know, Jose's a good guy, awesome professional. Yo, Kyle, let's let's grab a beer, man. Let's go, you know, let's grab. So now we went from like, cause it, and again, this is what Zoom and these, you know, social, um, I don't know what these platforms. are called, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, for your platforms, yeah, there you go. That's a great word. This is what they do. You you weed out a lot of people that you're just not going to vibe with. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and there's something wrong with it. That doesn't mean that anybody's because, you know, that doesn't mean if you're bad or he's good or he's bad, whatever. No, just sometimes people just don't vibe and that's okay. But instead of me driving somewhere to then feel like, oh, I don't know, man. Or for you to drive and be like, ah, right, Jose, I don't know if I'm going to be able to work with Jose. We do it over Zoom and we can get, you know, we get a feel for each other and then we'll be like, okay, oh, you know what? Hey, man, let's grab, a, let's grab some lunch or whatever. No, so this is, I don't think, I think this is just one of those, this social platforms like these have become the middleman to associations, you know, what I mean? or to partnerships. Because now, like I said, you don't have to drive somewhere to meet up and figure out, you know what, I'm not really cool with this guy or this gal. But you could do that over here and then you can, and, and, and if you feel like, you know, all right, yo, let's get together. And then now, now it's like the first time you're meeting each other. Now it's a little bit more jovial. It's like, oh my God, so nice to finally meet you in person, you know, whatever. It's a totally different conversation at that moment. But it, but again, it starts here and, and that's okay. And that's actually a great thing. Yeah, I think that's incredibly interesting, man. That's, uh, it's funny you say that actually, because I was on my way home from work today, uh, honestly, like a half hour ago. Um, I was listening to uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's um, podcast and he was talking a lot about, you know, kind of the same, uh, I guess, like pluses and minus about minuses about, you know, Zoom in the future for business and stuff. And he's like, there's no more like, you know, getting up at 430 in the morning to like go on an eight o'clock flight to Chicago to have a meeting at 12, you know, to then like fly back here at like, you know, 330 or whatever. You know, he's like, instead of like doing something like that, you know, you could just, you know, have a glass of wine, you know, with whoever or, you know, have a drink or, you know, and be able to meet these people, you know, like you said, and kind of get like a preview of like, you know, if you guys click in terms of personality, you know, potential business partners and like you're, you'll be in your living room, you know? (laughs) And, you know, like you said, like, I think it does kind of provide, you know, a nice preview, um, and saving a lot of time and stuff. And, uh, it does, you know, especially does, in, in different parts of the country and stuff too. And that's the other thing too, where now you can, act with, through this, through this forum, you can, or platform, you can connect with somebody really across the world. It doesn't really matter where yeah. it is. You yeah. could just, you know, as long as we, as long as we have reliable internet connection, you should be good. You can talk and, you know, you'd be on here for as long as you need to, you know, have a conversation. So it's, it's honestly, man, it's one of those things where, like I, like I said earlier, it's just a matter of having the right mindset, adapting, and just kind of taking it from there. Yeah, I, I totally agree, man. Moving on to our next question here. Uh, what do you consider to be the biggest variable in expand, expanding your clientele? Wow, that's a good question. So I think that the, um, for me, you know, for me, it's funny because, you know, it's like I actually think about this all the time. And I, and I think it's once again, it's really being, um, you know, uh, pliable from from the, not from a physical standpoint because I don't have a pliable fiber in me, uh, but uh, 
If I do any kind of stretch right now, get a Charlie horse. I promise you, you can bet on him if you want to. <laughs> I, I kid you not, man. Uh, I'll probably end up in a wheelchair song. But um, I think from, <laughs> from, from a professional standpoint, you got to be pliable. You got to be flexible. You got to be able to adapt. At the end of the day, you know, uh, sometimes you have to, it's not so much about changing the rod that you fish in. Sometimes you got to fish in a different pond or vice versa, you know. So sometimes it's just a matter of uh, being uh, being adaptable. In my case, you know, it's it's really uh, the biggest thing is being available. That that's huge. Um, I always said that I, I don't I don't work 24 hours a day. Yeah. But I'm available 24 hours a day in the sense of if I gotta if I really gotta take a phone call, you know, I will take if 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 I feel like I don't have to, then you know, leave me a voice or send me a text, much or. But if if I have to answer a text or have to take a phone call, I will. I don't have an, I don't have any issue with that. You know. Um, for me, and again, just the fact, and again, this is just always pros and cons to everything, but I just feel that in my case, it has a lot more pros and cons. Um, I like clients have my cell phone number, every single one of my clients. I don't, I don't think that I've ever called a, one of my clients from like an office number. I just haven't because if I'm not in the office, especially right now, for example, and I grant, you know, we can do call forwarding and that's the technology kind of helps with that stuff. But the point of the matter is at the end of the day, it's just a matter of being, you know, being available. And, and that's what I think I find to be the, the biggest thing to, you know, kind of explain from my, my clientele and also, you know, just your referral partners, you know, when, if, you, if you're present, if you're available, if, you know, they do, they can call you at any time or, or mostly any time, send you an email and you reply back, even if it's just like, Hey, I'm busy, I'll call you in a few or, Hey, can we do this? Can we talk about this tomorrow? Even if you're not going to necessarily take care of the issue right then and there, the fact that you're available to just at least let them know, you know, Hey, whatever, you know, what's it, what, what the situation is, that helps that 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 helps a lot you know that that helps a lot and of course you know doing your job you know like doing my job you know i have no matter how available i am if i'm not if i'm not good at what i do then well i'm just going to be available a lot because yeah. <laughs> no one's going <laughs> to call <me. laughs> you know what i mean so you got to you know you got to be able to do your job well um you got to be able to you know uh, and like in our in our case with with real estate you know a lot of times it's just a matter of you know, making sure that, you know, the, the price of the policy is right. You know, obviously I'm a, I'm big on coverage of so making sure that the coverage is correct as well. But again, it's just a matter of just being there, being present and, and um, being able to adapt to whatever the client's needs are. I like that a lot, man. I feel like that isn't really like talked about as much, you know, literally just like the science of being available. Um, Cause I mean, like, you know, I mean, if somebody, you know, I mean, I guess like, like what I'm trying to say is, I mean, like business doesn't stop after five o'clock. Correct. You know, I mean, a lot of people are trying to do like big things and stuff and like, you know, certain things are happening and to be able to have like, you know, a wingman as their neighborhood friendly insurance guy, Jose, <laughs> um, you know, like on the clock, even like, you know, sometimes after hours or whatever, you know, if there's something going on, then that's huge. You know, because yeah. I mean, not everybody at all is like that. And you know, the thing is, you know, at at some point, I I do want to get to the point where, um, you know, successful and I've been big enough where my job does end at five. Yeah. yeah. But at that time, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna make sure that I have someone, a couple of people under me that you know kind of work for me, that are gonna be available after five because I'm not. I don't need to be anymore, right? So, but until that but until that time gets there. I have to, you know, I have to be, I have to be available. I have to, now, of course, like I said, there's, there's always, you know, there's always, there's always has to be some balance there. There's, you know, you can't, you know, life can't be all about, you know, work and, you know, um, you know, if, you, if, if I'm on, if I'm on my lunch break, I'm eating, I'm eating, Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, 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 know, you know what I mean? Like I'm not, uh, unless unless somebody's dying somewhere, you know, and, and that's, I mean, that may not do with me anyway. Uh, unless somebody's dying somewhere, hey, I'll call you back. <laughs> yeah. I'll call you back. And that, because again, go, you know, people, one of the things that I've learned really a lot is, you know, you got to set the right expectations. If you set the right expectations, people can't be upset. You, you know what I mean? Like people can't be upset. If you, so if I tell a, if I tell a client or refer a partner, hey, listen, I'm I'm in the middle of something. I'll call you back. You know, within an hour or so. Great, that's fine. I'll call them, I'll call you within the hour, and I'll call, and then there you go. And if I call you within 15 minutes, you're like, oh wow, that was fast. So now I look like a hero because I called them back really fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? But 
but at the same time, it's like, you know, this, you know, when you set the right expectations, you avoid a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, kind of misunderstandings and mishaps and in, in business relationships because you're letting people know what the right expectations are. Like I said, I don't work 24 seven, uh, but if I have to take a phone call, if I have to answer a text, absolutely I will. Uh, that's, that, that's just good business. Of course. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you about having that balance. Um, I mean, like at the end of the day, you know, we still have lives and, you know, some of us have kids, significant others, you know, like what have you. Um, and I mean, like we only get a, a pretty short amount of time on Earth, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, you can't be like, you know, 100 percent, you know, work is your main priority. Like that's it, you know, but to really like have that balance between, you know, like enjoying yourself and still being like a really good business person and stuff. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm sure, you know, clients should understand that. You know, I mean, of course, to, and most uh, clients do. And yeah. most clients, you very rarely going to run into a client or a referral partner that that doesn't understand that. And the biggest thing for me, you know, one of the biggest things for me is that I love what I do. I honestly don't really see myself doing anything else other than insurance. Mm -hmm. But an insurance agent, like being an insurance agent, doesn't define who I am. Of you course. know, I was asked a while ago. I was in a referral network group. You know, what I, what would I like to be known as? And I really, what I really, what I would love to be known as is, you know, a nice, you know, God fearing guy, father, you know, husband who happened to be a really good insurance agent as well. Yep. That's it. Because at the end of the day, I'm not, you know, my life is not going to be defined by my, my, my profession as big of a part and as big as, as big of a role as being an insurance agent does play in my life. The truth is, like you said, I have other priorities you know, in my life. And that's okay. We all do. We all have priorities. And our job is not unless, you know, again, everybody has their own little, you know, thing that every, every head is his own world. But yeah. most of us that are that are, you know, for most of us, our jobs are not our main priority, our mental health is the health of our family is our relationships. That has to be because you, 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 you can have all the money in the world. But if you're miserable, or if you have a miserable home life, let me tell you something, ain't no money gonna buy, you know, happiness you know, or, you know, whatever. It's just not. So at the end of the day, I, I prefer to, again, everything within balance. I work hard, you know, my kids know, and, you know, that I, I'm, I'm trying to set a good example for them for as someone who does work hard to, to you know, to pay the bills and to give them, a, you know, a, a, a comfortable living. But at the end of the day, I'm a father first before I'm an insurance agent. You know, I'm a husband first before I'm a father and an insurance. Like, uh, you know, I, all those things have, have its place. So, and, and again, my job is very important, but it's definitely not my priority from, uh, you know, like, that's not what defines me. I'm, I'm Jose Brador, and I just happen to, you know, be a really good insurance agent, and that, that's how I make a living. But everything within balance, man, and, and, and again, now I cannot be like, oh, it's a little bit my family, and then not produce, because then it's like, well, then I'm going to not make money, and then I'm not going to be able to give my, my family the life that they deserve. So it's just a matter of having the right balance, man, and making sure sure that we, we we're not kind of you know teetering to either way we just kind of stay level-headed and stay you know in the right you know being stern in our, in our direction where we're going and just making adjustments here and there of course but the main thing is having balance that's really important man you know to your point i i hear that uh you know kind of mentioned from a good amount of people um you know just having the the general balance i guess in like different aspects of your life you know from work to um you know like mental health and staying happy and everything and you know just just being happy doing what you're doing you know to like raising your family and you know like physical uh like staying fit and everything you know just really balancing everything out you know and like totally to your point you know i mean yeah you know like you could work a bunch but like not have as good of a relationship with your family you know which should be like a priority you know at the end of the day or you know if you were like really really good with your family like that's that's fantastic but you know if you might not be producing like at work as much then it, they kind of offset each other yeah so i totally agree with you man you know to to be able to produce like the balance across different things is is crazy and be able to kind of have the self-awareness um you know to be able to see like different things going on in your life and like you know if everything kind of is in tune with itself yeah, and you said self-awareness, man, because especially when you love what you do, 
it's very easy to get caught up in it and everything else kind of falls by the wayside. So that's one of the things that, you know, I, I again, self-aware, I got to catch myself when I'm like, you know, I think I'm spending way too much time, you know, working. Let me, you know, let me spend some time with my family and, you know, or, you know, you know what, uh, maybe, hey guys, I've been here with you guys, you know, a couple of hours, you know, doing stuff with you guys. Let me get back to work, do some, you know, and, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm home. So obviously the kids come into the office and, Hey dad, or hey, what's going on? How are you doing? Whatever. We'll have a chit chat, but they know that I cannot like talk to them all, all day. Um, but, but again, but once I, but once I'm like, okay, I'm done for the day. I'm all theirs. Yeah. I'm all theirs because that, that's really what matters to me. You know, my, my family. So, you know, being, having this, like you mentioned, having, being self-aware of when to kind of make adjustments and when you, you know, kind of catch yourself like, yo, or even, even having the, 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 you know, the presence of mind when somebody tells you that, yo, bro, you, I think you work way too much or, or, you know, you, you, you know, you might want to spend a little bit more time with your family or, Hey, you might want to spend a little bit more time, you know, kind of doing these things to work. Having the presence of mind to taking that counsel, but you know what, that person is right. And just kind of going with it. You know what I mean? Cause a lot of, you know, most people that are in my, at least, at least I can speak for myself, but I think I can speak for just about everybody. Most people in my circle really do have my best interest at heart. So they're not going to tell me something that's going to like, you know, you know, going to put me in harm's way. So yeah. if they tell me, hey, you, you know, maybe you're working a little too much or, hey, maybe you got to do work a little bit more, take that counsel and run with it and see what happens. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it's really good to kind of have another set of eyes on it, you know, as well. Because, I mean, like you can only look, you know, one way at one time, you know what I mean? Like, and to be able to have, you know, that other those other perspectives to see, you know, kind of what their thoughts are and stuff and, you know, see if there's things that, you know, like they might see, um, you know, that like you might consider looking a little bit more into, you know, in terms of balance and stuff. And, you know, like totally to your point, you know, of what you said earlier, you know, if you enjoy what you do, then that is like beyond fantastic, you know, because a lot of people don't, but it's very easy to get caught up in it. Yeah. And then yeah. like, just have that tunnel vision you know, of like, oh, you know, I want to get this, 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 and this done. And then, you know, everything else might kind of be like, you know, dropping on your priority list, like involuntarily. And, you know, it might take another person to be like, oh, come on, man. Like, you know, we were supposed to go out for lunch that day or something, you know, and <laughs> like things just kind of happen, you know, like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's happens. important too, man. Like, you know, when you, you, you mentioned that, you know, but we're go no, things happen, you know, that's fine. Um, but for the most part, if I make, you know, if I make a, you know, an arrangement to like, like, for example, like today, right, we were going to, we were going to do this, yeah. like, unless something drastic happens where like, I have to take care of it, I'm going to be here. It doesn't really matter. I'm, I'm going to be here. Um, you know, I have clients calling me, I have, you know, and, and, and that's okay. You know, like I said, you know, I. I'm, this is my this is my time to do this. I told you that we were gonna do it, and I'm here. So, and the same thing happens with my family. Like, if I'm saying, "Yo, we're gonna go do do this," and then you you call it, "Hey, can you do this?" You know, and I'm like, "Now we gotta find another time to do it, bro," because I gotta go out with my family. You know what I mean? So, and again, things happen. You know, that's fine. But for the most part, you want to make sure that again, you stick to, you know, to what you said. And again, because at the end of the day, if you start to lean one way, something is going to, it's going to get out of balance and that's what you don't want. Or really yeah. none of us want. I love that, man. That's, that's incredibly valuable. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I wish my kids would feel about that. Everything I said, <laughs> this would be, my life would be so much better. I promise you, Kyle, but my kids saw me the way you did right now. <laughs> I love it. Um, what is the most important lesson that you have learned over your career? Oh, wow. This is good. <laughs> you know, the, the <laughs> you know, the, I think honestly, and, and I, and I say this all the time, you can't get too high when it's good and you can't get too low when it's bad. You know, there's nothing wrong with celebrating your success, of course. And there's nothing wrong with kind of like, you know, you know, beating yourself up a little bit when you, you know, when, when you're low or trying to figure things out when things aren't going well. But the truth of the matter is you can't, you can't, again, going through what we said earlier, balance. We have to do the best we can. 
to stay at a niche, you know, and because we are in sales, sometimes it's just going to happen that you're going to have great days, great months, you know, where, where everything you touch is gold. And then there are going to be times when you're going to hit that down spurt and, you know, you're going to, everything you touch is probably going to be, I don't know, an urchin is going to ping, it's going to, it's going to hurt you. You know what I mean? So that, you know, you got to, you got to make, and again, that doesn't mean you, you stop working hard in either one of those instances, right? Because when things are bad, you got to continue to work hard to get back to the peaks and valleys type of thing, right? But at the end of the day, you can't get too bad. You know, you can't get too low when it's bad and you can't get too high when it's good. You have to be able to, again, just maintain a sound mind and understand that, you know, again, as much as we want to celebrate our success, the truth of the matter is if we celebrate too much, we lose our hunger. Yeah. If we, if, if we celebrate too much, we lose our hunger to do more. And then if we beat ourselves too bad, we use the zeal to do more. So again, either one of those things is bad. You don't want to lose your drive. You don't want to lose your hunger. And you definitely don't want to lose your zeal. Um, so again, it's just a matter of staying even. And, and, then, and then another thing is, you know, and I know some people may like look at this a little crazy, like I'm talking crazy, but to me is the actual truth. A lot of what we do is going to require a whole lot of luck and a little bit of skill. You know, you could, cause you could be the, oh, actually, actually a whole lot of skill and a little bit of luck. You know, because a lot of times you can have the greatest product, you can have the greatest, you know, skill set. But until you need that one person that can perhaps put you in front of, uh, give you an opportunity or whatever the case may be, then yeah, you still have the skill set, don't get me wrong. But, you know, but the same thing is, the same thing works the other way around. You may, you may have the, the network, the resources to do a lot of things. But if you don't have the skill set to bring up anything of value, then what good is you knowing a million people? You know what I mean? So yeah. again, a, a lot of what we do is a, a lot of it, you know, a, a great, you know, the equation is like a lot of it is going to be skill, but there is a little bit of a, a kind of a luck. And I don't even believe in luck, but it's like a luck component where you know that it's it's really chance sometimes, you know, but, you, but even until you get there, until you meet that one person or those couple of people that are going to, you know, really be make a substantial change in your life from a, from a financial standpoint, you got to continue to grind. You got to continue to sharpen your skills. You got to continue to, you know, add value to, you know, to your, to yourself and to others. And it will, and it will work out. So those are, those are to me, the most, the biggest things that I've learned, you know, just understand that, you know, you got to stay in an even plane, even keel when things are good and when things are bad. And then, you know, just understand that no matter how skilled I am, it's going to require a little bit of luck. So I just got to, just got to continue to, grind and find a way to you know to get in to get me to that person that's going to put me in a better position financially yeah i, I think you totally nailed that one man that's in, like incredibly important you know tying back to the balance as well um you know i feel like that's kind of um you know i guess like what we sign up for you know when it comes to like the entrepreneurial kind of spirit like you know there are going to be some days that like you totally you know have the world in the palm of your hand and then there's other days that like you feel like a failure and you know should yeah. go to another career you know but like not reacting i really like you know what you said about you know staying like having like a middle ground you know between the two of those and still like acting the same way i mean obviously you know when those wins happen of course you know that's that's a great thing to celebrate but if you overdo it then you lose your hunger to keep it up and it's not going to last forever you know, it, it's totally like a cyclical thing, you know, like the stock market, like sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down, you know, it, like it, you're not going to have one point like constantly. And um, yeah, that's, that's totally huge, man. You know, just I, no, to, uh, it, 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 and again, man, it's one of those things where, you know, it, it, it's, it's really so, so important because in the end, you know, you want to make sure that you're not setting yourself up for any type of failure. And, yeah. and that especially happens Actually, you know what? It happens on 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 both ends of the spectrum. So when you when you are like too happy and you want to, you know, you, you celebrate a little too hard. What happens is when those valleys come, you're not ready for them. And then, like you said, now you're like, oh, I gotta switch my career. Yeah. You know, and then sometimes when you beat when you beat yourself up too much, an opportunity may come that can put you back up into that peak position. But because you're in a mindset of like, I'm a loser you know, you miss, you completely missed out on it. You, you know what I mean? So it, I, I, mentality is, m mindset is everything, bro. 
mindset is absolutely everything. If you don't have the right mindset, if you, if you, and again, we all go through struggles, man. There's not, you know, what I mean, it's not. I, I'm not always as happy. Usually, I am, but every, every, you know, some days I'm like, I'm my mind, you know, my mind ain't right. You know what I mean? And I find myself in, in thinking negatively, whatever the case may be. But you said it earlier, self awareness. When that happens, like, yo, bro, what you doing? Let's go, let's change it. You know, let's just, you know, change your mindset. Think of something else. Because in the end, I don't want to miss an opportunity to be there for someone or, 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 or an opportunity presents itself. And because I'm in a negative mindset, I don't take advantage of that opportunity. And, I, and then, you know, who knows when that opportunity is going to come knocking again. So uh, it's, it's really, really important to just, you know, um, again, even keel, even, you know, trying to stay within that mindset. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's incredible, man. You know, and even like to your point, you know, like it a hundred percent is, is a mindset game. And, um, you know, especially like, I feel like kind of the way that you look at failure, um, you know, whether it be like, oh, you know, something didn't go right or, you know, like just from like talking to a lot of people and stuff like that, you know, I feel like a, a common trend, you know, among, you know, kind of people doing big things is the way they look at failure in terms of like, yeah, either like something went wrong and that's something I messed up on. But if you can fix that the next time you do that or like make the likelihood of that failure, you know, decrease every time something happens, then your win column starts to get bigger, like consistently, you know, and like if, yeah, you might, you know, be in a negative spot, but is it really a negative spot? I feel like it's kind of dependent on how you look at it, you know, because like you said, like, you know, you could have like blinders on to any opportunities, you know, if like you're down in the dumps because something, you know, went wrong and. But if there's something there and you, like you said, you know, have that maintain that level playing field, then you could still pick up on that. Yeah. And it'll push you right back up to the top. You know, you know, the thing is, you know, I see a lot of quotes, you know, failure is just opportunity, blah, 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 all these, you know, happy, you know, happy go lucky theories. This and that yeah. failure should hurt. Yeah. Failure should suck. Like yeah. you should definitely be like, damn, I failed. Like there. Like failure is just part of life. What the difference is going to is what you do with that, you know, what you do with that situation. And understand that sometimes, you know, you're going to, sometimes failure is going to come for things that are completely out of our control. You, yeah. you, you know what I mean? It's just, this is, again, life is very sporadic. Um, and life is very cyclical. You know, sometimes, like I said, everything you touch is gold and sometimes everything you touch is trash. Yep. It doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. It's just a matter of, just you know kind of riding that wave and making sure that you know you stay within the right mindset to continue to do you know what you can the best you can every single point of the day at every single point every time you talk to a, to a client or to a referral partner or whatever make sure that you're at your best hands down and if you do that are you still going to have failures absolutely the failure is a guaranteed yep. but wins are also going to come like you said and and you know the the the, the thing is it's kind of like you got to have one thing in order to like enjoy the other. You know what I'm saying? Like failures make wins so much better because you know what failure feels like. You know, if we look at failure as anything other than failure, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. If I suck, I sucked. If I failed, I failed. That's fine. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, we got to look, you know, failure is just as, you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing to experience because it'll make you appreciate wins a whole lot more. Now, granted, I don't always want to feel failure, right? I, I'm, I have a good memory, so I know it feels, you know, if I can avoid feeling, you know, um, failing here and there, I definitely will. Uh, but the point is that, you know, we, we, we need both things in order to really appreciate what we have. You just want to make sure that you're winning more than you're failing. That's really what it's all about. You know, and as long as you have that, you know what I'm saying, then, then, then it's good. And failure is such a broad, you know, uh, term but at the end of the day you know as long as you're learning from whatever mistakes you made or from whatever circumstance you kind of found yourself in um that led you to not you know not having success at a particular time as long as you learn from it and kind of implementing things to kind of so if the situation kind of presents itself again you can kind of maneuver it and you're good man you still failed but you but you know but you're on you but you're on the right track to winning again so that's really what it's all about yeah definitely man would you say like failure kind of keeps you humble 
So, you know, when you do Absolutely. get those, those highs of, you know, like Absolutely. every like feeling on top of the world, you know, there's always that kind of yin yang like balance. Absolutely. You know, the, and, and humility is huge. Yeah. Humility is huge. But again, your failure does definitely keep me in that. And I think overall, you know, um, you don't need failure to, re- to remain humble. But every once in a while, it's nice for life to throw a, you know, to throw something at you and be like, hey, you know, you're not all that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you, you, know you know, you know what I mean? Like you, you got to, you know, check yourself. And, and that's okay. No matter how successful you are or how, or no matter how successful anyone is, the truth is that things that are out of our control are going to happen. And it's just a matter of how you react, you know, how you react to them. Rich people make a lot of bad decisions too. Yeah. You know, wealthy people make a lot of bad decisions too. And that, and then they're okay with it. You know, maybe they invested in the wrong thing or maybe they didn't invest in something that, you know, I was killing myself yesterday because of GameStop. <laughs> Who would have thought that GameStop was going to have the world on fire? I think I don't know if it was yesterday or this week. Yeah. If you had any, if you had any stock in game, you know, if you had any stock in uh, in GameStop on this Monday, today you might be a very rich person. I can tell you that right now. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? You know what I mean? So, there were, I'm pretty sure there were a lot of people with a lot of money that would have been like, you know, damn, you know, I wish I would have invested money in you, but it, and that's okay. But you don't, you you can't dwell on that, man. You just gotta, yeah. you know, you just gotta move on. It's gonna happen. Not nothing is perfect because if everything is a win, then imagine. I mean. I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how valuable life would be if everything was good all the time. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a matter of, you know, kind of adapting to whatever happened, learning from it, but moving, moving forward, feeling the pain, like, damn, I lost, I failed, but moving forward and, you know, putting yourself in the direction to win again. That's really what life and business is truly about. Yeah, man, totally. You know, I, I feel like, you know, the success and failure, obviously, you know, like in moderation, you know, kind of balance each other out. Um, you know, not to get off track, but like I saw a screenshot yesterday of ga- like somebody's portfolio with Game Stock stock. Game, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and um, getting like a sixty percent return or something in one day. It's it's insane. crazy. I this know. guy took this guy that you know he like they you know they like bet on you know stocks and whatever that's called. This guy took fifty thousand dollars his life savings and put it in a Game Stop on. I think it was Monday. And yesterday he made fifty million bucks. What do you have to say about that, man? Nothing. <laughs> that's nothing. But hey, that's how that. But again, yeah. I, you know, if I would have just put a thousand dollars, the guy knows what you know. What I mean, but again, I can't dwell on that because it didn't happen. So it's just a matter of man, be you know, make myself a little more open to, you know, maybe look at these shows that talk about stocks and this and this and that, and you know, and be be mindful that to you know opportunity is gonna knock at some point you just gotta take advantage of it and you know invest and say well, whatever that is you know whatever you're gonna yeah. do but you know it's just a matter of you know i'm gonna fail we're all gonna fail that's just part of life and failure is not an opportunity to win somewhere no 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 failure is failure bro you we sucked at that moment yep. so we gotta move on we gotta figure out a way to learn from it and on to the next one i love it man i do <laughs> <laughs> Now, Jose, how do you define wealth? Wealth, um, to be completely honest with you, you know, for me, wealth has nothing to do with with money. Um, back in 2010, somewhere around there, I was uh, I was unemployed for pretty much the entire year, and. Um, Bro, I don't think as a family we were, we were we were ever happier. You know, because granted we were stressed out because you know money trying to you know I was, I was doing like side jobs here and there and collecting and all this other stuff. But I think in general, you know, we were very very happy because we knew that we had what was necessary. We we knew we had what what we needed to just get by, and um, and that also allowed us to you know kind of strengthen each other knowing that everything will be okay when i was feeling down and you know crappy you know having my kids who were very little at the time but you know just seeing them knowing that they don't really have a worry in the world that all they really care about is 
me coming home or me being there and hugging them and, you know, playing with them and all that. Um, so I, I think for me, the biggest, you know, and, and, and again, not to get all like religion or anything like that, but I am a very spiritual man. And one of the things that I learned is, is, you know, there's a lot more happiness in giving than in receiving. So if you really want to be wealthy in life, um, or at least if I want to be wealthy in life for me, I, 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 I got to give, um, you know, seeing my kids smile, um, like the other day I bought my kids a pair of sneakers, um, and like, bro, these kids I were acting like, I don't know, like, I don't know, it was crazy. I'm like, well, yeah, it's a pair of sneakers. But he really wanted those sneakers. <laughs> so yeah. uh, when he, to see that moment right there, I mean, that's just, that's, that to me is wealth. I mean, that, that to me is wealth. Money is good. Don't get me wrong. Money is good. You know, having money, being able to take my kids, you know, vacation here or whatever the case may be, you know, uh, that's, that's really, 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 that's really, really, really good. But the truth of the matter is there are a lot of people with a lot of money who are miserable, who have crappy family lives. You know, they can buy anything in the world. They can have just about anything in the world. And there's nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, it, you, know, you can't be happy among them, among that much miserability. So for me, it's really about like, you know, making sure that, uh, you know, my family is good. Uh, that the people around me are good, just to be able to contribute something to someone else. That to me, if I can make somebody smile, if I can make somebody's day, if I can, you know, really help somebody with anything, that to me is wealth. And of course, from a financial standpoint, you know, being able to, you know, live comfortably and then, you know, be able to do some of the things that I want to do, you know, because I do want to do some things, you know, obviously. Uh, but for me, wealth is a totally different definition than what I think most people would associate it with. Um, and, uh, but yeah, that's, that's me. I love that, man. You know, I feel like I was talking to somebody recently about this, you know, like there's literally like, if you boil it down, there's no reason to not be like genuine and like offer value to people and stuff and like help people out, you know, just to see them succeed. Because I mean, yeah, you know, like, it, it's great, you know, like, you feel great, like, they're, you know, off, like, a step further than they were before, and then even, you know, like, aside from just giving, like, you know, the principle of reciprocity, you know, like, what you give, you know, eventually, like, somehow things will come back, you know, karma, you know, if, like, people believe in that or whatever, um, yeah, you know, I mean, the way you treat people is, you know, how you're going to be treated. So, you know, and like that's just, the one thing, bro, that I, again, I have a completely different um, opinion about this and I do most people. Mm -hmm. I don't think that at any point in the history of humankind has there ever been more dissemination or, or more importance or at any point in our history has more importance been placed on self-development. Okay. Yeah. And again, there's nothing wrong with developing your skills and doing your thing. Nothing wrong with that. But a lot of a, a lot of today's, uh, you know, a lot of today, just in general, it's about self and self and self. And hey, listen, it's all good. We want to see you win. Do you, you know, yo, all this great, great, all great. That's all good. Yeah. But what happens is, bro, that at some point, at some point, you know, when my primary focus is to get me to where I want to go and your primary focus is to get you where you want to go, at some point, those we're going to clash. Because our interests are no longer aligned. Because you, you're trying to get somewhere, and I'm trying to get somewhere. And maybe in the early stages of us getting to that where we need to be like, yo, man, we're all buddy-buddy. Yeah, we, you know, whatever, man, let's do our thing. But at some point, it's like, you know, we're going to just, because we, we have different goals. We have different mindsets. And that's why you see, bro, you see it without getting into a specifics. You see it in just about every single realm of our life. Bro, people are nuts. Like you can't, you really, people are almost like allergic to having a, just a regular conversation. People are always clashing with each other. Why? Because everybody's on a different spectrum. Everybody's looking up for themselves. And of course you have to, you know, you know, but again, going back to, you know, to, 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 uh, to my, my, you know, my spiritual principles and biblical principles, you know, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You got to love yourself first. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But if the Bible doesn't say you love your neighbor 
you know, less than you love yourself or love yourself more than your neighbor. No, I got to love me just as much as I love you, bro. And, I, and if I can help you help, if I can help you get to where you need to be and you help me get to where I need to go, we will never clash. Yep. And we'll still get to where we need to because I am genuinely trying to get you there and you're genuinely trying to get me to where I need to go. But people's mindsets are all kind of like, and, and, but again, I think that the self-development industry is one of, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Mm-hmm. And yet at no point in history have we ever been more divided. That's deep. <laughs> you're, you're totally right <laughs> though, man. Like, just that, you know, I feel like, you know, kind of the open-mindedness is, is starting to fade away, you know, between like everybody as humans all together. You know, like just to just to be open to different people's opinions, and you know, yeah, it's <laughs> it's just again, it's a, it's a touchy subject, and I, you know, but at the end of the day, it's the truth, man. If I can if I can help you get to where you need to go, Kyle, and you can help me get to where I need to go, we will 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 always be good. Of we'll always be good. Yep. And that and that and now that's just us two. You know, just us two. Imagine if now we take that concept and like make it worldwide. I mean, I think a lot of, a lot of things would be, you know, a lot of things would be different, but again, it's, you know, again, in life, you know, you gotta, that's what you gotta vibe with the people you vibe with and the rest you gotta like, okay, well, you know, kind of not vibe with them. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, it's re- that's really what it's all about, man. We gotta make sure that, you know, we help each other as much as we can. And again, just do the best we can to just lead each other to help each other get to where we need to go. And if we do that, man, we should be good. Of course, man. Yeah. You know, especially, you know, for us in particular, you know, I mean, like insurance as well as real estate, you know, I feel like it's kind of a team sport to some degree. Like there's only like a certain distance you can go, you know, all by yourself, you know, without being tied in with other people and, you know, just building things together. And, you know, like if you want to get to that point, then yeah, you know, other people might as well, um, you know, but like, you kind of have to be like genuine to each other and everything. And like, yeah. like there's literally nothing wrong with, you know, just sincerely helping each other out. You know, honestly, like it's fun to get the rush of helping somebody out and then see like the smile on their face, you know, it's like, Oh, you know, I met this guy through this guy, you know, you introduced me to this guy and now like we hit it off really good. And like both of us are doing great things. Like it's just like the rush of, of just helping people and being genuine, man is I feel like it's not as common nowadays. Yeah. And, and, and like, like we spoke earlier, you know, when it came to balance, there's nothing wrong with self-development. That's not, I don't want to sit here and be like, you know, but what happens is the balance has been lost where yeah. self-development has now become self-centered, um, you know, uh, we're self-centric. And again, that's just, it's just bad overall for, for all of us. But again, you, you know, you find people that, you know, like, such as yourself, who are willing to kind of have people on your platform and just talk and kind of let them, you know, say what they need to say and kind of go from there. And, you know, and you help them build my, like, this is, this is definitely going to help me build my brand. And we'll do the same thing with me, you know, on, on my platform. And I'm sure that, will you know, hopefully that'll help you build your brand. But the point is to help each other with no, like, there's no strings attached. It's just like, again, two dudes is generally having a conversation and that's it you know what's 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 so bad about that but exactly. again most people are i've turned self-development into being self-centric and that now look all you know it's a mess you know yep. get your brooms this is a mess <laughs> yeah it, it most certainly is <laughs> um all right so to kind of hop into the next one here i know you know we talked like quite a bit about like a bunch of different aspects of you know keep a balance and like you know, like maintaining, like, you know, being a really good person and helping people out and being genuine and everything. Um, what are the most effective resources that have helped you the most so far on your journey? You know, whether it be like networking or, you know, I know we've talked about, you know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> networking has definitely been uh, great. Uh, but honestly, just people, um, other professionals, you know, other professionals have also been uh, really instrumental in helping me, you know, uh, grow uh, and helping me kind of, you know, now, you know, not be where I was four years ago, right? And I'm no, and I am by no means anywhere where I need, to, where I want to get to, 
but at least I know that I'm making progress. Other professionals have been absolutely amazing uh, yeah. in, in the insurance industry, as well as outside of the industry. You know, uh, having, being able to sit down with, a, that's why, I, you know, taking criticism and taking feedback has been absolutely, you know, incredible. But again, having other professionals that are willing to take their time to be like, hey, you're doing this good. You could be doing this or just, just you know, you're, you're at an event or you're, at, you're in a conversation with a couple of people and you hear somebody say something like, oh, damn, like it wasn't even directed towards you. But, you know, man, you know, it's like, wow, that's that's actually pretty, you know, pretty, uh, you know, pretty cool. A uh, good way to look at things like other professionals in, in you know, in the industry, whether it's uh, insurance or other other industries um, have been a great, great resource, you know, um, you know, for me. Uh, to just kind of, you know, get better at what I do. And then something you said earlier, which came, you know, with self-awareness. All, you know, self-awareness in this particular case has been a great resource because it has really allowed me to see, um, how can I put it? Like, not everybody who says they want to see you win yeah. really means it. You know, there there are some people that will, you know, will scream it, you know, to, to, to the heavens. Yo, I want to see you win, bro but we'll never take the time to actually help you win. Yep. And I appreciate those people, you know, but, but then there are other people who, never, who will never say they want to see you win. They'll never publicly say it to you or to anyone, but yet they do small, they, they, lose, they do things here and there to help you, to help put you in a better position than you were before. So, yeah. you know, self-awareness in this case has been a great resource because once again, you get to weed out the folks that are really want to that really want to see you win because they really want to see you win and or those that say they want to see you win or but they don't really want to you know they don't really like i legit bro, i legit had a had a conversation with a guy um about he's in the, he's in the insurance industry and he does his, you know he said the same thing yo i want to see you win and i'm like well well you know then like i call him maybe a couple of weeks later or whatever i can't remember the exact details but um, I just asked him a question about, you know, ownership and, you know, owning an agency in your own business. And he was like, well, man, I really can't, I really can't talk to you about them. Like, why? I'm like, I mean, you're my competition, man. Like, you know, I mean, uh, that's just kind of awkward. I'm not gonna, and I just yeah. sat there like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> like, are you serious right now, bro? Like, this is, this is legit happening right now. It was just so, so crazy to me. And, and then, and, and then that just goes to show you, like, then I had, I had some other guy, you know, some other, well, not like, I don't think it was a guy, but somebody else in the insurance industry, I'm trying to hit him up on Facebook one day. And he's like, I'm like, I'm like he, he, he blocked, he blocked me for no reason. He just blocked me. So I had him up, I had, I had him up on his cell phone and he's like, oh, I, I you know, I'm, you know, I'm all my competition. Now. I'm like, not, you know, I'm like, what? What are you talking about, bro? So people like that, man, they're not they're good, you know, great people. I'm not, and I'm not saying this to, this to like, you know, they're, they're great people. But their, their mentality and my mentality will definitely never align, never align if that's yep. the mentality that they have. So sometimes it's just best to be like, you know what, you're good, you're a great person, great professional, continue to do you. But I'm self-aware enough to be like, this is not gonna, this is not a convenient relationship for me. So, you know, we'll see each other at an event. Hey, what's up, man? If I got to have a beer with somebody, hey, what's going on, man? You know, dap you up, say hi, how's the family, how's the kids? Great. But outside of that, we just can't, we just can't vibe because you have a completely different mindset as to what it takes to be successful in this business and it really in any business. Uh, so, but you gotta be self-aware of that. You gotta be, you know, you gotta make sure that you really look at who's really contributing to your success and who's just saying they want to contribute to your success, but they're really not doing anything. So being able to differentiate those two, having the self-awareness to differentiate those two has been a great resource for me as well. Yeah, that's, that's super crazy, man. You know, to kind of possess that, um, that trait, you know, is it's really insane. And, you know, like it doesn't happen right away either. You know, I no. feel like you just kind of like adapt that over time. And, um, but yeah, like to kind of get back to um, your point, you know, about like, you know, you just like shooting the breeze with other, you know, people in your industry and, you know, having them shut you down because of like, you know, because you're their competition or whatever, you know, like, I can't believe that, man. Like the way I kind of look at something like that, like, you know, like they could win in the short term by being like really like, you know, closed and like secretive and like doing their thing. But you, man, like you like you want to help them out and everything like, you know, see what's up with them, you know, see how everything's going like you're the one who's going to win in the long term. 
you know, just by like spreading the love and like, you know, just having fun, you know, even if they are your competitor, you know, there might be like something here and there that, you know, like you guys could help each other out with, you know what I mean? Like, nah, bro, and to be honest, like, this is really like, this just, let's be very, very clear. Yeah. There really is enough for everybody to eat, man. There is totally. There really, really is. So, uh, you know, again, you're just going to have different, you know, you're going to have, uh, um, you know, sometimes because of what we do, there's going to be some overlap. Maybe we're going out to the same client. And that's fine. But that, that's, that doesn't really, that, that really, really happens. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's really just a matter, like, if you don't want to see somebody win, like, you really don't want to see somebody win because you think it's a competition, then great. But don't say you do, right? Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just, you know. Uh, you know, keep it 100, you know what I mean? Just be real. Like, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to see your competition win. And that's totally okay. That's, that, again, there's nothing wrong with some, some of these guys that are, some of these guys that are like that are very, very successful at what they do. And I have no reason to believe that they're not going to continue to be successful. It's just a matter of just not me, me not able, not, not being able to vibe with them. And to be completely honest, if this, if I can't get anything out of a relationship, especially like a business wise, like, there's no reason for me to be in this partnership. If the only lesson I can learn from you is, like, I don't want to be like you. So I did get something out of it. But if, yeah. unless, unless I see that we're, I'm going to get anything else from it, yeah. then there's no – and, again, I'm not I'm, – I'm, listen, I'm not a $100 bill. I'm pretty sure there's people out there that will look at me and be like, you know what, I just don't vibe with Jose because Jose is this way or whatever the case. And that's totally fine. You know, that, that, that's okay. We, we should all, you know, evaluate who we, you know, who we associate with. But – in the end, man, it's just a matter of I just prefer to go about it a different way. And but again, it's all about being self-aware and that this you, know, you got to really be choosy with who you're going to spend your time with. Yep. You know, especially you know, kind of um, like in the real estate industry, like so you know, I'm looking for my house in Lowell or whatever, right? And you know, obviously, there's a lot of other people buying in Lowell, you know, but like I would love to, you know, like talk to somebody you know, talk to investors and stuff that, um, you know, might be my like indirect competition, but hell yeah. man, like, I, you know, I'd love to like help you out and like, you know, like see you succeed as well, you know, cause we're in the yeah. same game. And like, I totally agree with, you know, especially like with real estate, that's kind of, you know, where it came up for the first time, like recently is like this pie is big enough for all of us to eat, you know, it's about like, just like you said, man, you know, like, it's not like there's a really limited, like, you know, there's like a huge sense of urgency and like people aren't going to eat because like, you know, it's, it's such a cutthroat, like, you know, this, that, the other, there's enough for everybody to eat, man. So like, I don't understand the mentality of literally just being like that self-centered and like, you know, not wanting to like just close off, um, you know, from other people in your industry. I mean, like most of these industries, man, are, are team sports. You know, especially us. Yep. Like, if yep. you help each other out, you know, so what if your competitor is like, there's enough to go around, man. You know, celebrate each other's wins and, you know, pick each other up from your losses. Like, let's, let's and, do this together. And the, and the crazy thing is that think about how good you would feel, how anybody would feel when you know that you contributed to somebody else's win. Of course. <laughs> like, dude, like, I'm sorry, but that had that, 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 that there is a lot of value in that because now, you have, you know, it almost validates me as a person because like, oh, well, what I, what, I, what I did for this person worked out for him and look at him or look at her. He's, she's doing great, whatever. You know, that actually validates me, you yep. know, as someone that's in the industry that knows what they're, you know, what they're talking about. So, I mean, it's just a different mentality. But again, I don't criticize anybody's mentality. I'm just saying that it, it, this is not the way I look at things. Yeah. See, and even, you know, like right there, you know, even if, like it, you know, like you try to help them out and it may not work for them, then, you know, you were still really nice to them and you offer them like a potential step in the right direction. You know, like it, even then, you know, just passing them on to somebody and then, you know, uh, okay. <laughs> um, you know, like just passing them on to somebody and, um, you know, like giving them an opportunity to, to push them a step further than they were. What's wrong with that? You know, because then I the think. person who you're referring <laughs> is happy because you're thinking of them. This person's happy because you're helping them. You're happy because you're helping these people out. Everybody's happy, even if it doesn't and work. And it's going to come back to you, bro. <laughs> you know? That's what people don't know. It's going to come back to you regardless. It really, really is. So, 
I mean, but again, I don't, I, I'm not here to, you know, you know, kind of, you know, throw shade at anybody's mindset or anybody in particular. Yeah. That's not what this is about. I'm just saying that I just don't agree with that mindset. So we, you know, again, if I can get anything, if I can't really get anything out of the relationship, then it's all good. You know I mean? It's all good. And it's all love. You know, we, we're fine, you know, and again, I don't have any, you know, we'll, we'll see each other. Like I said, we'll hang out, we'll talk, whatever, this and that, but that's it. You know, it'll, it'll, you know, it, 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 that's okay too. Yeah. You definitely can't go wrong. Um, moving on to our next question. Uh, what values are most important to you when it comes to doing business? I know, you know, again, we've talked about like yeah. values in all kinds of different directions, you know, <laughs> for me, man, honestly, for me, is just, just honesty uh, and integrity. I know that, that that gets thrown out a lot, but I really, really am a man of principle. You know, I really, really am a man of principle. And at the end of the day, um, you know, honesty is it's key. Integrity, doing the right thing, um, it's 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 extremely extremely important. And and again, just being available, setting the right expectation. You know, understanding that it's better to you know uh, under promise and over deliver than it is to you know over promise and under deliver. Like you know, just always keeping myself in that mindset of of being truthful um, and just doing the right thing has proven to be, you know, a, a great great. I think I think a lot of a lot of people who are have had any measure of success will probably say that's been you know. Some people get you know some people do get you know have success by being crazy shady, but that's okay. But most people don't, right? So you know, the, I think anyone who's had any measure of success will tell you if you if you're honest. And you do the right thing, everything will kind of take care of itself. Yep. I totally agree. Yeah, that's definitely, um, you know, some really, really common, uh, I guess, like variables, you know, to, to doing really great things and, you know, just, just being a great person overall and stuff. It's like, it, it sounds so simple, but like, it's crazy how much like it's not. You know what I mean? Like not everybody does that, you know, like, and it's like just to be the guy who's, you know, like honest and like mm -hmm. you know, hard work and everything. Like it, it goes a lot further than it sounds. Well, you know, to be honest, like a lot of people in my industry, there's a lot of agents that I know. Most agents that I know are good, honest people who do the right thing all the time. Yep. So then, but we, then, then it's just a matter of, you know, who, who has the better habits, you know, who's got, who wanted more, who, you know, but other than that, you know, you gotta, but the basis, the, the foundation for any success is, is that you gotta be a good person. You have to be honest. You have to, you know, kind of keep everybody else's interests at first, you know, that, that, that's just a good foundation for, for, for any success in any, I'm thinking any business in any industry. Yep. I totally agree. Unless you're in the business of spying, and in that case, you you can't be honest, or you know. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, last but not question, Jose. Um, do you read, and what is your favorite business investing or real estate book that you would recommend to anyone? Or what do you, you mean, know, do I read? Like... What, do you, what do you mean, do I read? It's kind of <laughs> offensive, man. I mean, I'm a just kidding. No, nah, I do, man. I do. As a matter of fact, this is this is uh. I actually got this here today. It's actually still in the, in the plastic. I got the box. Oh, the box is right here. Yeah, the box is right here. I just got this today. Um, so one of the things that I used to do a lot when I was younger, I used to write and read a lot. And of course, you know, you, you know, kids come into play, responsibilities come into play, and a lot of those good habits just kind of fell by the wayside. So, you know, I, I really put myself, you know, set, set, set the goal of reading a lot more, writing a lot more. I was talking to someone today. Uh, that I met on a, are you familiar with Clubhouse? I think so. I think okay, I've heard so it's of a it. really good app. It's a really good app. But anyway, I met somebody on there and I had a Zoom meeting with her this morning. And she even kind of like a lot of times, even just audible, like even if you just put the book on and just listen to it, you know, while you're driving, while you're doing something at home or whatever the case may be. And all these things just to kind of, you know, people, you know, people disseminate information in, in a different way. And you know, uh, maybe the way this person says this particular thing is going to resonate more with me than a, so it's just a matter of, but the point is I do read, 
you know, I, I, I graduated high school knowing how to read. Uh, you know, I won a spelling bee as well. Um, Ooh, okay. <laughs> well yeah, yeah, actually too. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but yeah, man. So, the, so, so one of the books, one of the books, it's actually, and I got it right here too. Um, this has probably been one of my favorite books in a very, very long time. And it's called Reach. I'm not sure if you can see it there. Um, and um, I don't know where I got this book from, to be completely honest. I know it's at an event. Um, I haven't read it. I think I got it about a year ago. And I haven't read it in a couple of months. I started reading it again. Uh, but the point is, this book is absolutely awesome. Uh, because it, it, really, it really talks about kind of like getting your mindset to, to a certain, you know, uh, one of the, just to be brief, but one of the points that she makes here is that like, are you an Eeyore or are you a Tigger? Right? And if you're familiar with Winnie the Pooh, Right, you know, uh, the Tiggers in life are like that jovial, happy person that's full of energy that really brings energy to just any any situation. And then you have your Eeyores who are just like drain the, the you know just drain the energy out of everything, <laughs> out of yeah. everything, right? So you know, and it talks about either like am I one of those people, and then on you know like which which one am I, and then of course which people am I like associating with, right? And that, that, that to me has been a really huge point um, to, to, you know, to, uh, you know, to kind of implement in my life. Like, I'm, I really want, do I, re, do I want to be a ticker or do I want to be an Eeyore? And what am I doing to, to really be a ticker? Because obviously I, wanna, I don't want to be, I don't want to, I don't want to be an Eeyore. I want to, I don't want to drain the energy out of anything, right? So, so those books are, have been, have been, uh, have been good. And I am trying to do a lot more reading. Uh, when I, I'm not trying, I will do more reading. I'm going to hopefully this year is to, at least, you know, read 12 books, one, one book a month, and then just take it from there. Uh, and then hopefully, you know, and then of course, some people read one book a week, and that's great. You know, hopefully I'll be in that, in, in that. but at least for now, I'll, 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 I'll do 2021, one book uh, a month, and, and then write a lot more. Um, now, what, so what was, what was the other part of the question? I forgot, what was the other part of the question? Um, what is your favorite business investing or real estate book that you would recommend to anyone? You know, from, you know, from, from, from an investment standpoint, I'm actually glad you, you, you know, you asked that question because I am starting to dabble a little bit more into that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it would be nice to, um, so I'm actually going to do some research and, um, see what investment books are out there that would be like for a lot of you know, people that want to be day traders and, you know, kind of like me just to do it, you know, part-time and, you know, kind of do something here and there. Uh, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, man, uh, definitely you know, regardless of whether it's real estate, regardless of whether it's insurance, regardless of whether it's, you know, investing, the point is that I'm reading a lot more and um, making sure that I fill my, fill my brain and, you know, with good information is going to help me level up and get to the next level and continue to uh, grow as a person and then as a professional. I love it, man. You can't beat it at all. That book sounds pretty interesting. Reach. I'll have to see if I can get that one on Amazon or something. That sounds yeah, pretty interesting. Yeah. I mean, to be completely honest, you know, and I was, I'm so sad. For, I mean, it's so crazy. I forgot to mention like my favorite favorite book of all time. No, this and this is legit, bro. This is not a plug. This is not. This is actually yeah. the truth. You know, my favorite favorite book. It, it's, it's definitely the Bible. I've read the Bible a million. Like I've read the Bible so many times, uh, complete from from because there's a lot of and every time I read, there's a lot of you know, a lot of the principles that I have in in business come from there because this is great stuff. Uh, but you know, I don't want to get like talk about that you know religious stuff. But uh, but so we you know, but these books. And I was so excited about getting these books. I ordered them. Like three weeks ago, I was about to go on Amazon. I'm like, yo, where my books at, bro? Like, you took my money already with my books. Yeah. You know, and I actually just got them today. So I was like, oh man, when I, when I read the the uh, the questions that you were that you sent, I was like, I'm so excited that I'm finally <laughs> happy that my books guy and I'm gonna tell Kyle. Uh, but yeah, man. So th these books that I got today, the author is Ryan Holiday. Uh, um, I've never read any of his material, but someone did refer uh, the book that's called uh, The Obstacle Is the Way. And so I found three of his books online. I was like, oh, man, whatever. It's cheaper to just buy them by the balls than it is to buy them separately. So I might as well just buy the whole, you know. Four, three books man. I got three months worth of reading right, right there. Perfect. Isn't that the best? <laughs> it is, man. It definitely is. Again, it's, it's a good habit to have. It's just hard to kind of pick it back up once you haven't done it for a while. But it's yeah. really a great habit to have. It really, really is. It is. It's, it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, Jose. Thank you so much for coming on here, man. It, this was a, a really powerful conversation, you know, about entrepreneurship and like, you know, maintaining balance in your life, you know, through different things and, you know, just 
being like really genuine and you know just doing great things man it uh it was such a pleasure to have you on oh um, yeah oh sorry <laughs> uh, go ahead, go ahead, bro. okay uh, i was just gonna ask you know where you could be I, i'm on your on. show you you do you man i'm on your show what do you say <laughs> I was just going to ask where you could be uh, reached on like social media or, you know, like your uh, insurance um, stuff, you know, like. So the best way to reach me is my cell phone, uh, which is 401-660-5212. On social media, like I'm on Facebook, um, you can look me up at Jose Brador, which is BS and Bravo, R-A, D-S and David, O-R. And then on social media, my uh I don't know what they call a username handle whatever uh instagram is bradore.your.insurance.agent so again i could i can be reached just about anywhere i'm not a hard person to find uh so if anybody has any questions or you know if you just want an inquiry about you know their insurance or whatever the case may be or even just to have a you know just a nice conversation like the one we just did i'm yep. i'm always up for you know for some good conversation man and i wanted to tell you Thank you so much for doing this. I think that this is a, I think this is huge. I think this, especially for someone as young as you are, to get into the habit of having other people that perhaps have been, I mean, not to undermine your youth because nobody should undermine your youth because again, you're just because you're young doesn't mean you know what you're doing, right? But the fact that you're willing to have other people who are perhaps a little bit more seasoned than you are, have a little bit, have dealt a little bit more than you have in the industry at this time, bro, that's, that you, you're gonna you're gonna go places man that you're really gonna go places bro so my pleasure being here thank you so much jose that that honestly means the world to me man <laughs> it does but um yeah i'll let you go um but yeah thank you so much for coming on man it this was this was huge this was such it's a good love, man you're love. getting one big hug from me man be good <laughs> take right, care man. i'll talk to you soon have a good Bye-bye. night man All right, guys, that concludes our Creating Wealth podcast episode for today. I want to thank every single person that has listened this far. It really means a lot to know that people can learn from me and with me as we build wealth together. Hopefully, you can take home at least one thing from this podcast that will improve your life just a little bit. If you could, please check me out on social. That's at Kyle Curtin Real Estate on Instagram, Facebook, and I'm on Bigger Pockets. Until next time, let's build together.